friends. Aunt Liz TV! She's a magician in the kitchen. Aunt Liz TV! Watch them Mondays and Thursdays. Aunt Liz TV! Cooking yummy foods and tasty treats. Aunt Liz TV! Get my orders and taste the buns leaf. Aunt Liz TV! It's time to eat! Hey everybody, it's Tasty Thursday. Welcome back to the kitchen. We're back in our own kitchen today, so everything will look familiar to you. Now, this summer we were doing a book on Thursdays, and while we're not going to do a book necessarily every Thursday, I wanted to share a recipe with you from this great new cookbook I got. It's from the American Girl Library, and it's called the Mix It Up Cookbook. They have all kinds of really cool recipes, so today we're going to make something from this book. It is called Bird's Nest Bowls. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but this picture right here is what we're going to make. It's a bird nest with some gummy worms in it, and we're going to actually home make our gummy worms. So, we're going to put this book down for just a minute because we don't need it quite yet. The first thing we need to do is get our jello for our gummy worms um, going. So, all you need for this recipe is a package of jello. You can use any flavor you want. You need some orange juice. You need a bunch of straws and some rubber bands. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and we have to boil our orange juice. So we're going to boil two-thirds cup of orange juice. I'm go ahead and just pour that in and it shouldn't take very long at all for it to start boiling. So while we're waiting for that to boil, we're going to go ahead and take our straws and you're going to just get a big bunch of them and you're going to take a rubber band we'll start at the bottom here and you're going to just rubber band them together so we got our bottom doesn't have to be neat just so they're stuck together and then we'll do our top and then you'll notice that I have a coffee mug sitting in a pan that's because once our juice and jello mixture is all mixed together we're going to pour it down into the straws and the coffee cup is going to hold the straws up and we put it inside this pan because we might drip when we're pouring the juice in there. So it's just kind of an added layer of protection against a gigantic mess. So we're going to give this just a minute to boil and we'll come back and check it and mix it all together. Okay, our juice is boiling so it's time to go ahead and add our jello. You just dump it right in, like you do when you're making um, a jello snack normally. And we're just going to stir it around. Now I'm just using strawberry jello and orange juice. You can use a combination. If you want to make multicolor gummy worms, what you would need to do is make two separate batches of jello. So you would need to make um, a, like a green batch and then a red batch. You wouldn't be able to do them all in the same straw, but that's okay. Okay, now our gelatin mix is all mixed up. So this is the part you're going to want your adult assistant to help you with. Okay, so we're going to, we've got our straws standing up. Let me get them so they're nice and even so they don't tip over on us. Okay, so very carefully we're going to just pour down the middle of the straws. Whoops, kind of got away from me there. It's going down each individual straw. This will be such a cool recipe when we're finished. Okay, so we're going to just let our gummy worms stand there for a little bit. We're going to actually put them in the fridge. I have to wipe my hands off because I spilled. We'll put them in the fridge and then we'll come back and check them in about an hour. Okay guys, so we're back. So it's actually the next day and I let our jello worms sit in the fridge overnight. And so now we're ready to make our bird's nest bowls out of our American Girl Mix It Up cookbook. So the recipe I'm using, in case you have this cookbook, I'm looking at page 56 and 57. That's where this recipe is for our bird's nest bowls. So, um, these are really easy to make. They take just a few ingredients. So the first thing we're going to do is take our 
chocolate chips, and I'm using dark chocolate chips. You could use dark chocolate chips. You could use milk-free chocolate chips. You could use butterscotch chips, peanut butter chips, any kind of chips you like. The first thing we're going to do is melt them, though. So I've got a little measuring cup, and I'm going to pour two ounces of chocolate chips into this measuring cup. Now, this is a measuring cup that's safe to use in the microwave. So I'm going to put this in the microwave, and I'm going to start the timer for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to check it. It will probably take two different batches of 30 seconds, but what you'll do is after the first 30 seconds, give it a good stir, and then put it in for another 30 seconds. So we'll be back as soon as our chocolate chips are melted. Okay, our chocolate chips are nicely melted, so I'm just stirring them in this little measuring cup ready to mix our other ingredients. So what we're going to do is take our larger measuring bowl and we're going to pour our melted chocolate in. Get it all in there. And then our next ingredient is going to be peanut butter and we're going to add one quarter cup of peanut butter. And this is going to act as just kind of a thickening agent. Mmm. That's part of licking the chocolate off your fingers. Okay, so I'm going to take one quarter cup of peanut butter, and as you probably have discovered by now, we use crunchy peanut butter in our house, but you can use creamy too if you don't like the chunks. So we'll just get our one quarter cup of peanut butter. Get just a little bit more. There we go, that's about right. And we just dump it in on top of our melted chocolate chips. And then we're going to just stir this up. Now you'll notice that mine's a little bit chunky and that's because there's peanuts in our peanut butter. If we're using the creamy, yours is going to be nice and smooth. Okay, now it's time for our next ingredient which is going to be chow mein noodles. Now you usually use this in Asian food, but we're going to use it today in a dessert. And I'm going to put in one cup of chow mein noodles. Now, this, the measurements for this recipe make three bowls. So if you want to make more bowls or you want to make, um, you could make bigger bowls too, and then you would just have one giant bowl if you made this recipe. So I'm going to just, my hands are clean, except for I just lick my fingers. I don't think our taste test will care to you. Easier to put them in the measuring cup this way. One more handful. All right, and then we're going to go into our chocolate peanut butter mixture, and we're going to stir this up. And what you want to do when you're stirring this up is just make sure that you get all of the chow mein noodles covered with chocolate. You don't want any um, brown or the light brown color of the noodles going through. You want them to all be chocolatey, peanut buttery colored. So we're getting there. Alright. Okay, so now that they're mixed up, we're ready to move on to our next step. And this is where you're going to need wax paper. Now wax paper is a kind of paper that is um, has no shine on one side and has a lot of shine on the other side. And the side with the shine actually helps food not to stick to it. So what you're going to need to do here is just cut some little pieces of wax paper. And you're going to need some little bowls. So I've got these little bowls here. And you're going to just take the wax paper and stick it down inside. And you don't have to be particularly neat about that. You just want to be sure that the wax paper covers the inside of the bowl completely. So then the next step we're going to take is to take our chocolate noodles and we're going to just take a scoop of them and just drop them right into the wax paper. Now they're kind of runny right now and that's because the chocolate is all melted. But what we're going to do now is take um, this is a small ladle. You could also use a spoon or a small measuring cup if you want. And we're going to take it and just smush it right down in the middle. And you can kind of hear it crunch. It breaks some of the noodles. Just push it down in there. 
and then when you take it out you'll have a dip in your noodles so we're going to go ahead and put this in the fridge i'll finish those up in a minute we're going to put this in the fridge and let it get nice and cold for about an hour is usually about how long it takes and i've made some up ahead of time so we can see what it looks like right away so after your noodle bowls are chilled they're going to look like this you're going to grab your wax paper by the edges and just lift it right out of the bowl and then this makes it really easy because we put the shiny side up the food is touching the shiny side so it won't stick so then you just peel the edges off just like this and you're left with a little chocolatey bird's nest bowl so I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we're going to go get our gummy worms that we made yesterday out see how they look inside of our chocolatey bird's nest bowl okay so I've taken our homemade gummy worms out of the fridge they're still just as we left them yesterday and what we're going to do now is take our stack of straws and lift it up out of the jello now notice in mine some of the jello leaked out the bottom so you may have the same thing happen um, but I still have you can see down in there there's lots of gummy worms in here so what we're going to do is just take our rubber bands off to separate our straws Ooh. splattered at me I, think I just got some jello on my face okay so now we're going to just take these straws and separate them and you may have some jello stuck in between too but you can kind of see on here where the the jello how far it went up now if you were using a a more narrow um, cup it would probably come up a little bit more because your jello wouldn't spread out as much so what we're going to do is take one of our straws and you should be able to just kind of squeeze at the bottom and pinch out your gummy worm there is our very first homemade gummy worm so we're going to do just a couple more just grab the straw here and just pinch at this end and just squeeze it out just like that now if we had turned our straws upside down and these are the expandable kind if we had pulled this out we would get some more ridges in our worms they might look a little more wormy but I think these are just fine this is great for our first try I think so we'll do just a couple more and then we will fill up our chocolate bird's nest and then I need to see if I can find somebody who will be willing to taste test this okay we'll do just a couple more now this recipe your hands kind of get dirty when you're you can see you get jello on your hands from the middle piece but that's okay jello is easy to clean off with some warm water okay so here we have our chocolate bird's nest and we're going to put just a few of our gummy worms homemade gummy worms inside the bird's nest now if you don't like homemade gummy worms you could also use um, you wouldn't have to make the gummy worms you could still make the bird's nest and you could use it um, to be, fill it up with M&Ms or peanuts or anything else you like. So I'm going to go wash my sticky jello -y hands and clean this mess up and see if I can find somebody to give a taste testing to our homemade gummy worms in our chocolate bird's nest. I do. 